it's a wet and rainy day outside and I'm taking a little break from working on the car, the Riley, uh, mainly because I need to order some more parts. So I actually want to work on the Valisette, the little motorcycle, but first I wanted to do another little job. Uh, I did do a very quick piece on the bike last night, which was I machined up little end cap pieces uh, to fix where they had cut the ends off the frame. And the way this frame seems to work is this is tube, three quarter inch tube. And these are metal inserts that seem to have been pushed into the ends. So I just machined up some steel that I could make a push fit at the end and I just plug welded up the holes. Uh, still needs a bit of finishing, it's not perfect yet, but I don't think these things were ever perfect anyway. Um, so in order to do that, I was working on the lathe, of course, and I decided it was about time I fixed my DRO on it. So if you've seen any of the other films, you'll know I got one of these magnetic DRO units and I put that on there and the this axis works reasonably well um, but i could never get the cross slide axis to work properly it, it just would skip measurements so i tried multiple strips um, replaced it multiple times i tried different things to mount it and i just couldn't get it to work so i gave up basically and i've gone on to these caliper style ones you can get off Amazon and they work pretty much the same as digital calipers and given the sort of stuff I'm machining I'm measuring with my calipers anyway the accuracy you get from these is good enough um, well within the engineering tolerances I work to so this works kind of as you'd expect it's just a sliding box on a on a scale um, I got one, this is for the long axis, it's not long, very long, you can get much longer ones, but I'm only usually interested in the, the measurements up close, the little short measurements, so I didn't get one that goes the full length off the lathe. Um, I will have to think quite carefully about how I make it so you can disconnect it, so you can get the full travel when you need it, but I'll sort that out when I get to, uh, get to that one. But I'm looking at the, the cross side one and the way I've decided to do this is mount this on the front here and the way I'm doing it is I machined up on the mill a T-nut um, just from a piece of mild steel. It's got three M3 holes and I made up a small aluminium bracket and all this will do is clamp this onto there. So that'll hold this still, and then I need to make a little bracket to clamp this to the back here, uh, similar to what I did on the other side. And I think that should work. Um, it does mean it's sticking out the back quite a bit, but I've got plenty of depth behind there, so I think that should be fine. Um, in order to get this to hold tightly, I've just used strips of PVC insulation tape underneath it uh, to give it a little bit of rubberness, rubberiness, I guess, um, something a little bit compliant. So as I clamp it up, it'll 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 squeeze this tightly, so it won't move, but it won't damage it. Um, so I'm going to attach that little bracket now and see how it looks. This is the little bracket in place. Uh, one disadvantage of this is it gets in the way of the, I think this is for the steady mount, but as I don't have that, that's not a big problem for me. Um, of course you can easily remove this, you undo the screws and you can slide it out. But I haven't got this attached yet. Obviously I need to build a bracket on the back here, which will be a fairly simple little bracket to attach the the reading head to. But you can see it working in one direction now because as I pull this back, this is stopped by this. 
so it will actually give you a readout um, so if I wind it back it should be 10 thou um, I've just been checking it on my indicator here 10 20 30 yeah so that seems to be working pretty well 40, 50 just a little off but um Of course, it'll do millimeters as well. So if I zero it there, 40 thou, 10, 20, 30. Should be a millimeter. It's fairly close. Like I say, it'll be it'll be accurate enough for the the sort of work I do. 10, 20, 30. I've, I've overshot, I think. That's why. But I think that'll be fine. That seems to work pretty well. Uh, as I mentioned, I need to um, for this one that goes on the back, I only have that much travel instead of the full length of the lathe. So this one, I will make it so that if you want to, you can quickly disconnect it um, so that you can use that full travel if you need to. And of course, here you see one of the disadvantages of these magnetic ones all the little bits of swarf stick to it, stick to the strip. Uh, so I'm going to remove that strip and I'll have to figure out um, how to mount that, that long axis one. I think what I'll do is the bracket that holds the little measuring box will be attached to these, these screws here and those I can um, make removable so if you ever want to go the full travel you just undo those screws so the, the reading head isn't moving because the strip is mounted down here it doesn't get in the way of anything uh, I think I'm gonna give this a bit of a cleanup as well while I'm sort of behind here this is how my brackets and bits and pieces finished up uh, this one was pretty easy to mount I did put a 6mm nut underneath there as a spacer, these are 5mm bolts. Um, the nut fitted nicely into the slot here, except on this side where I'd managed to drill the hole ever so slightly off centre, so I had to file one of the flats on the nut to get it to sit in that groove. But that keeps the reader head away from the back of the, the lathe, and it was just a simple folded aluminium bracket um, to attach that. These have quite a few mounting holes in the back, which is good. It comes with little screws, which I reused. Uh, these little um, little screws here were too long, so I just threaded a, a nut onto them so they didn't have as much length. And that holds fine. If I ever want to go past the end of this, travel-wise, you undo these, these two screws, and then this is free, and this can go backwards and forwards. Um, although, it will hit this. Um, I guess this will come to here and then this would hit it but if you uh, take this whole bracket off then it, it frees it up so that was that one and this one here is just a simple aluminium bracket uh, to see um, and I just drilled and tapped a small M3 hole there just to hold this bracket straight uh, 
you do have to make sure all these angles and things are bent correctly. It takes a little bit of fiddling because you just you want to make sure that this moves completely parallel to this. I need to make sure this is um, moving directly in and out, not on an angle, because if it's on an angle, it'll throw off your measurements very, very slightly. So a little bit of tweaking to the bends and things, and that came out right. Um, this one to remove, uh, you can just undo these and undo that screw. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have little Allen hex head screws, but I might replace all of those at some point. Like I say, I just used the ones that came in the kit. Uh, the little kit actually comes with little mounting brackets and bits and pieces. So that's good. Um, these are magnetic, which is handy. So they will sort of stick onto there. But it also came with little plastic mounts that I think uh, Pretty sure they just sort of mount on like that. It's the problem with magnets around a lathe, everything gets covered in metal. Um, anyway, they, they came with it. So what I will do is I'm going to make a little steel panel that sits on here so I can just stick them to that steel panel up here. I've got plenty of leftover steel of course. Um, so I think that's working reasonably well. I'll just make that little back panel and then I'll put it all all back in its place. I'm going to give it a clean while I'm, I've got access to the back of it and uh, I think that should work a lot better than those magnetic ones. You might be asking why didn't I just buy a longer one of those because they are available. Um, I think they, you can get 600 mil which would be about right for this. Uh, the reason is because these came from overseas and the postage goes up ridiculously over a certain length, I guess, because now it's a trickier thing to post. So I just went with the shorter one. I can always replace it later. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible just to get the this piece. Um, if I could, maybe I could do that. So this is the, the new DRO setup, all complete. I just made a aluminium panel. It's quite, uh, not aluminium, steel panel. These have got magnets on the back, so they just stick onto there, and a bit of simple cable management. Um, one thing about these is they don't auto shut off, so you have to remember to turn the power off or the batteries will go flat. And um, other than that, they seem to work really well. So you can change it from millimeters to inches. I should probably actually read the little manual and figure out what all the settings are. Um, and then I think this I think this gives you let me turn it to millimeters and we zero this. Zero that. That. Gave me 10 thou of movement. That should be 20 thou. Yeah, I think it's giving me the actual amount that's taken off. So when you're machining something round, the scale on here measures how, how far this moves, but if you're um, machining a round part and you take 10 thou off, the part gets 20 thou smaller. Um, so I'm guessing that's what that's for. I haven't figured out what the set button does yet. Um, but yeah, that works really well. Both axes work. Uh, seems rigid enough and it seems repeatable. Uh, so I did some, some tests. I also I turned up a bit of brass bar and measured the ends of it to make sure it was matching. Uh, they're easily within the accuracy of my ability to measure, let's put it that way. Um, I find it quite hard to measure diameters of things um, with the micrometers and the calipers and, and I can measure something three times and get three different readings. So 
that's kind of what limits me and my machining ability I think it probably just takes practice maybe better measuring tools um, so yeah that's really good I'm quite pleased with how that's come out nice and simple uh, so I didn't get onto the bike at all uh, I just decided it's almost five o'clock it's probably time for a beer I've had a big cleanup so everything's looking fairly tidy again and um, I think that is probably where I'm going to stop for now so yeah like I say these are Shahi Shahi brand uh, I just got these off, on, uh, off Amazon they were delivered to New Zealand no problem and my little panels reasonably flexible here but that's okay um, I tend to use this one more than than this one anyway so I think that's it for the weekend